We're beginning here today uh, because this is where it all began on the campus of Cal Poly University. On May 25th, 1996, this was the last place that Kristen Smart was seen alive. Uh, it has been 24, almost 25 years uh, since uh, Kristen went missing. 24 years without a resolution uh, until today. I'm here this afternoon to announce the arrest of Paul Flores for the murder of Kristen Smart and the arrest of his father, Ruben Flores, as an accessory to the murder. I want to start just in, with a little timeline for those who, uh, who may not uh, follow this completely. So how did we get here? It's been a long process. Uh, Kristen Smart was a 19-year-old freshman Cal Poly student in May of 1996. She was last seen on May 25th of 1996 at approximately 2 a.m. near the intersection of Perimeter and Grand Avenue, which is right over my left shoulder, uh, as she walked home from an off-campus party. Kristen was last seen with Paul Flores, uh, also a 19-year-old fres freshman that walked her home from the party. Uh, Kristen never returned to her dorm room that night and has not been seen or heard from since that time. She was reported missing to the Cal Poly Police Department on May 28, 1996. Cal Poly Police handled the initial investigation into her disappearance with the assistant of investigators from the San Luis Obispo County District Attorney's Office. On June 26, 1996, about a month later, the San Luis Sheriff's Office assumed the lead investigation in the case we have actively investigated the case since that time. We have uh, received assistance from the FBI, California Department of Justice, uh, numerous other law enforcement agencies throughout the state of California, and actually out of the state of California. Um, I introduced Detective Cole for a reason. About four years ago, uh, the Board of Supervisors, and I think the chair of the board, Lynn Compton, is here. Uh, granted a request that I had for an unsolved cold case detective. Many of our cold cases are actually assigned to our detectives in addition to their normal caseload, and Kristen's was one of those cases. Kristen's was one of the cases that I um, uh, targeted for this position, and after granting that position, Detective Cole uh, assumed that position and, and has been working on Kristen's case since then. Throughout our investigation, Paul Flores has remained a person of significant interest. There's been some discussion of what is a person of interest versus a suspect, and it's really a matter of terminology. Uh, when a crime occurs, everybody in, involved in that area could be a person of interest until they're ruled no longer of interest, either through alibi, through witness, through physical evidence. But Paul remained as a person of interest, and as the case progressed, became uh, a suspect and the prime suspect in the case. So I became sheriff in 2011 and did a complete and requested a complete review of all the physical evidence that had ever been taken in the, uh, in the missing person case. Um, in late 2016, we discovered additional evidence that confirmed that Paul was the suspect in the disappearance. In 2019, we interviewed several witnesses that had not been previously interviewed. Uh, and I'll, I'll say uh, some of that information came, came to light through the podcast that many of you are familiar with um, that was uh, produced and, and uh, eventually uh, led to our, our uh, interviewing that witness. And uh, with the with the knowledge of the uh, discovered uh, of new evidence, new witnesses, sheriff's uh, detectives secured a court order authorizing the interception and monitoring of Paul Flores' cell phone and text messages. This is one of many things that have been done over the last 10 years. In February of 2020, detectives served search warrants at the home of Paul Flores, as well as his sister, mother, and father, all simultaneously um, last year. Physical evidence recovered during these searches led to the service of additional search warrant at Paul Flores' residence in April of last year. During the search warrant, detectives recovered evidence related to the, the murder of Kristen Smart. In March of this year, detectives served 
another search warrant in Arroyo Grande uh, at the home of Ruben Flores, the father of Paul Flores. Additional evidence related to the Smart Invest investigation was discovered that, at that time. So as a result of this evidence, a San Luis Obispo Superior Court judge signed two arrest warrants and two additional search warrants. At approximately 0730 this morning, uh, today, uh, both were arrested simultaneously with a team down in San Pedro, California, and a team in Arroyo Grande, California. And they arrested uh, Paul Flores and his father, Ruben. Paul was arrested for uh, charge of murder uh, with zero bail, meaning he is unable to bail. And Ruben Flores was arrested as an accessory to murder with a bail of $250,000. We are still currently in the process of executing those search warrants. Um, could be there for the remainder of the day or even into tomorrow, depending on, on what they find. Now, I understand a lot of people want to know what we found in the detail, and that's kind of the, the question that people continuously ask us and ask me, is what exactly did you find and what exactly do they have that has led to this? Well, um, I can tell you, unfortunately, the search warrants were sealed, which means I cannot discuss what evidence was found. And probably more importantly is, is that we have a due process right right now. And everybody here is, is, um, is, is allowed that due process right. That means it has to go to court. There has to be a trial of, 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 of 12 people and decide his guilt or innocence. So discussing specific items of evidence is, is just not appropriate um, at this point. Um, I will say this, and this is probably a, a, a question that I will answer at this point, um, that we have not recovered Kristen. Uh, we will continue to focus on finding her remains regardless of any court action. So we will continue the process of finding out where Kristen is. Um, we know that's an important part uh, uh, or important uh, issue with the family. Uh, when I took office, uh, one of the, the uh, first acts that I mentioned was re-examining starting from the beginning. And I often tell people this, that law enforcement solves crimes really two ways, through witnesses and physical evidence. When we lack witnesses, we rely on physical evidence. You hear it in the news all the time about physical evidence that has linked somebody to a crime. Well, that's extremely important to solving a crime. In this case, we were dealing with a case that was, at my, at my point of coming into office, about 14 years old, which makes it very difficult. Since that time, I believe there's a list somewhere, I can't see it, probably somewhere over here. Thank you. Um, that is highlighting what I'm just about to tell you. Since I came into office in 2011, we have served over 41 search warrants on this case. Uh, re re uh, done physical searches of 16 different locations, one of which was back on the back hill, you may remember a few years ago, a complete re-examination of every physical item seized, um, submission of 37 items of evidence um, from the early uh, days of the case for modern DNA testing, recovery of 193 items of physical evidence, new physical evidence, We've conducted approximately 137 person-to-person -person interviews, and in addition, completed over uh, 500 additional police reports. I can tell you this file, the size of it is probably in the size, if you put it on a, 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 a hard drive, it's in excess of three terabytes. It's that much involved in this case. Um, it's my hope that we're able to take the first step toward justice for the Smart family. Uh, peace for the community, some justice out there uh, for all of us, and most especially for Kristen. Um, I have spoken to the Smart family uh, numerous times, including, uh, including this morning, um, matter of fact, twice today. Um, I think they're feeling um, a bit of relief, uh, but as you can imagine, um, until we return Kristen to them, um, this is not over. And we have committed to them that we are not going to stop until Kristen has been recovered, no matter what the cost, no matter what the time, we're committed to that. And I know they believe in us. I know they believe that we will, uh, we will find Kristen. 
So this afternoon, we have turned the case over to the San Luis Obispo District Attorney's Office. The way the process works, the warrants that were signed by the Superior Court allowed for the arrest and booking of Paul and his father, Ruben. Uh, now the case has been handed to the District Attorney uh, for review and their announcement of, of further proceedings. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my investigators. There was certainly the uh, investigator that I introduced, Detective Cole, but there was the detective commander that's in the audience, a, a new detective commander, um, many people over the years that have worked on this case. I think the, the, the people that are representing here today, myself, the chief of Cal Poly Police, uh, weren't part of this investigation, weren't part of this agency that we are all in um, when this happened. And I think the, the cooperation that's taken place, uh, I know President Armstrong has really opened the door for us to do and provide us anything that he possibly can, uh, including having this press conference here in Cal Poly um, today. So I'd like to introduce uh, President Armstrong uh, to say a few words. Thank you, Sheriff Parkinson. I appreciate so many members of the Cal Poly and Central Coast community, San Luis Obispo, being here today. Our Cal Poly and Central Coast communities have watched the case of Kristen Smart's disappearance closely and hope for justice for Kristen and resolution for the family for years. The news today of arrest in connection with, this, with the case brings sadness, but also a measure of relief and hope for resolution. While we know that today's developments uh, do not represent the end of the case, it is a significant uh, step. We at Cal Poly offer our thanks to Sheriff Ian Parkinson and his department, as well as District Attorney Dan Dow and his office, who have worked hard to find answers in this case for Kristen and her family. I know that many across California and the U.S. and many of you here today also thank Chris Lambert for his efforts as well. Last, our thoughts and prayers continue to be with Denise and Stan Smart, all of Kristen's family and friends as this process proceeds. Thank you.